Vertical Navigation, or VNAV, is a great resource that provides for optimized descent profiles to a designated altitude, such as traffic pattern altitude, a fix designated by ATC, or to a series of altitude constraints, such as on an arrival procedure. This video covers the Enhanced Descent VNAV functionality found in the GTN family of navigators. Pilots have been taking advantage of the precise lateral navigation provided by Garmin devices for a long time now, and with your GTN, you have the same level of precision for vertical navigation. The GTN can provide multi-waypoint barrel VNAV descent guidance for both the in-route phase as well as for initial approach guidance. This guidance, provided in the form of a vertical path, is based on altitude constraints associated with lateral waypoints in the active flight plan. For instrument approaches, this guidance ends at the final approach fix. On the GTN Active Flight Plan page, you will see altitudes depicted in either white or cyan font, and some altitudes may have lines above, below, or both above and below the number. An altitude displayed in white with no lines above or below is an altitude calculated by the system and provides an estimate of your altitude as you pass over a waypoint. If the altitude depicted in white has lines above and or below, it is an altitude constraint pulled from the navigation database, but is for reference only. These are not used in determining VNAV guidance. An altitude displayed in cyan is an altitude used in determining vertical guidance. If a pencil appears next to the altitude, that indicates that the altitude was manually entered. An invalid constraint which cannot be used by the system, will appear with an X over the altitude. To enable VNAV functionality on the GTN, there must be a barrel corrected altitude source. This provides the necessary altitude information to the system. To enable the display of a vertical deviation indicator, or VDI, you need a Garmin flight display such as a G5, G3X, G500-600, or TXI. To enable autopilot coupling to the VNAV path, you must have a Garmin Autopilot installed. There are certain pilot actions that are required to ensure successful employment of VNAV. First, you need to input or confirm that altitude constraints are shown in the active flight plan. These could be entered by the pilot or populated automatically as part of an instrument procedure. Second, you must set a selected altitude that is lower than the current altitude. For ATC-controlled operations, the altitude selected should be the lowest altitude to which you were cleared to descend. Third, you must ensure that the aircraft is on an active nav leg. And finally, ensure that VNAV is armed on the Garmin Autopilot mode controller if so equipped. If a pilot action is missed or a limitation exceeded, alternate methods should be used for the descent. This could include vertical speed mode, VNAV Direct 2, or disengaging the autopilot and hand flying. For non Garmin autopilots, you need to set the vertical speed required at the top of descent. To develop your understanding of VNAV functionality available in the GTN family of devices, we'll first show how the feature can be employed on a typical VFR flight. While flying along on a Direct 2 course from Redwood Falls to Flying Cloud Airport in Minneapolis, we decide to arrive at the traffic pattern altitude for Flying Cloud Airport three nautical miles before the airport. This prevents us from descending into the pattern and provides for visually scanning for traffic in the area. To accomplish this using the VNAV function, we first go to the Active Flight Plan page on our GTN and then touch the Destination Airport Waypoint button, which brings up the Waypoint Options screen. Here we select the Along Track button and then enter a 3-mile offset. Next to the newly created offset waypoint, we select the Altitude field, and then select the At Altitude field, and then enter 1,900 feet, the traffic pattern altitude at Flying Cloud. Take note that other selections for the type of constraint include At or Above, At or Below, and Between, for when those are needed. At the bottom of the VNAV Options page, you can see a VNAV Direct button. This button provides for those times when you wish to begin a descent immediately 
and it places the top of descent, or TOD point, slightly ahead of the aircraft to allow for a smooth transition to the descent. After pressing save, we see the altitude constraint in the flight plan. Next to the altitude constraint is a pencil icon, indicating that this constraint was manually entered, and it is not part of a procedure retrieved from the navigation database. If you aren't familiar with the traffic pattern altitude at your destination airport, the GTN provides another method for creating a VNAV altitude constraint that takes out the guesswork. Using our previous destination airport for this example, we select the altitude field next to the airport, select the altitude entry field, select the AGL button, and then enter the typical traffic pattern height of 1,000 feet. Entering that number first, we then select our 3 nautical mile offset point and then save the constraint. Now we have a constraint that is precisely 1,000 feet above the airport elevation. Selecting the back button returns us to the map page where we can see a TOD indication and the designated altitude constraint just prior to flying cloud and the CDI bar shows that this is our next waypoint. Additional information concerning our planned descent can be provided on the map page by selecting some helpful user fields for display. We do this by selecting the menu button, then the change user fields button, and then selecting the fields we want changed. Here we will select time to top of descent in the upper left field. And vertical speed required or VSR in the upper right field. Now we can see exactly when to begin our descent and the rate at which we'll need to descend. This information is especially helpful if you don't have a Garmin flight display or Garmin Autopilot installed. Backing up to the home page and then selecting the Utilities button followed by the VNAV button, we can now see our VNAV profile. Based on our current ground speed, we can expect to descend at a vertical speed of 673 feet per minute to meet the default 3 degree flight path angle. Selecting either of these buttons allows for making temporary adjustments as desired. For example, if you wanted a descent angle of 2.5 degrees, you could change that here and the VS target number would then change. If you desired to descend at 800 feet per minute, the flight path angle would change as required. If you wanted to change the default flight path angle, that can be done by selecting the menu button on this page and typing in a new value. The VS required and vertical deviation fields populate on this page one minute prior to descent and are constantly recalculated based on any changes in ground speed, descent rate, or deviation from the vertical path. The time to top of descent is indicated here until the descent begins and then changes to time to bottom of descent. Note that for any of these indications to appear and for VNAV to function, the VNAV enabled button must be shown as selected on. And you must have an altitude entered into the flight plan or these buttons will appear subdued. When within one minute of the top of descent, the vertical deviation indicator appears to the left of the altimeter tape. A vertical speed required indicator shows on the vertical speed indicator, and we hear vertical track. On our TXI PFD, we can see a map image showing the TOD and a square marker at the BOD point as well. If not already accomplished, this is a good time to ensure that the selected altitude is set to our desired altitude. As the VDI arrow descends, we are prepared for the vertical path descent to pattern altitude. The same procedure can be employed during an IFR flight. IFR pilots often receive instructions to cross at a certain altitude at a defined distance from a waypoint in their flight. In this example, we are on a flight from Duluth International to Flying Cloud Airport. With the heavy airline traffic on arrival to Minneapolis International, ATC directs us to cross 10 miles north of Gopher at 3000 and to descend at pilot discretion. While we could simply start down after acknowledging ATC, that would mean losing out on the benefits of remaining at altitude for as long as possible, especially when we have a strong tailwind. Creating an optimized descent 
is the better choice here. So again, we go into the active flight plan, select the Gopher VOR waypoint button, select the along track button, and then enter the 10 mile offset, followed by selecting the enter button. On the active flight plan page, we now see the new offset waypoint. Selecting the altitude field next to this waypoint, we then enter 3,000 feet. Select Enter, and then Save. Going to the map page, we can see the location of the altitude constraint and our TOD is showing. All we need to do now is make sure to set 3000 in the selected altitude window, and then select VNAV on the Garmin Autopilot controller if so equipped. Failing to set a lower altitude in the selected altitude window is a very common error that would prevent the aircraft from descending at the TOD. A best practice here is to set the lowest altitude to which you are cleared. Another common error is to forget to select VNAV on the Garmin Autopilot controller. This selected altitude entry in Autopilot mode selection can be made at any time prior to TOD. If not equipped with a Garmin flight display or a Garmin Autopilot, pilots can monitor the time to TOD and vertical speed required on the map page using the configurable data fields. Pilots who fly arrival procedures on a regular basis are familiar with the descend via clearance given by ATC. This clearance simplifies ATC communications, but can lead to errors if not properly managed by the pilot. With an arrival procedure that contains altitude constraints loaded, the VNAV function provides for an optimized descent profile that helps to ensure that each of the altitude constraints is met. To determine this, We've selected the Grandpa 1 arrival into Las Vegas, as that arrival has multiple altitude constraints. The chart for that procedure shows the first constraint at Luxor at 12,000, then Grandpa at 11,000, followed by Dublix at 9,000, and Frog at 8,000. Here we can see the arrival procedure as reflected in the active flight plan. To the right of each waypoint in the selected arrival, we can see an altitude, with some showing in white and some in cyan. White numbers are advisory only and reflect the altitude you will be at at various waypoints as part of the vertical path to the designated altitude in the flight plan. Cyan is used to depict designated altitudes for which vertical guidance is available, with the first such altitude showing here at 12,000 feet at Luxor just as depicted on the chart for this procedure. The remainder of the altitude constraints are also the same as reflected on the chart. Take note of the lowest altitude in the procedure, in this case 8,000 feet at Frog. Since that is the altitude you can set into the selected altitude field when cleared to descend via an arrival procedure. Looking at the map display for this arrival procedure, we can see the first altitude constraint indicated at Luxor Intersection at 12,000 feet. We can also see the TOD marker just past Casino Intersection. As the aircraft approaches the top of descent, you'll see a magenta altitude number appear near the selected altitude field on the Garmin G3X, G500-600, and TXI flight displays. This is the designated altitude for the upcoming VNAV descent waypoint. When within one minute of capture, you will hear Vertical Track and see a flashing message appear that informs you that the TOD is within one minute. At the same time, you'll see a Vertical Deviation Indicator, or VDI, appear to the left of the altitude tape with a magenta arrow that descends from the top. You will also see a vertical speed required indication appear on the VSI tape to the right of the altitude tape. This is a good time to confirm that the selected altitude is set and VNAV is armed on the Garmin Autopilot controller. When the TOD is reached, thrust should be reduced and managed as necessary to maintain the desired speed while the aircraft descends on the calculated vertical path. Indications on the VDI, altitude tape, and VSI indicator show that the VNAV descent is in progress. 
Once we reach the current vertical constraint, with further vertical constraints in the flight plan, the system sequences to the next constraint on the vertical path, and we can then see the next altitude constraint showing on the map. The VNAV descent continues in this manner until reaching the lowest altitude in the flight plan and as allowed by the selected altitude. This point is marked on the map with BOD, or bottom of descent. As mentioned earlier in this video, Enhanced VNAV provides guidance all the way to the final approach fix on instrument approaches. Here we select the ILS Runway 26 right approach and select Flies for the initial approach fix. Looking at the chart for this procedure, we see Flies has a constraint of 8,000 or above, and the final approach fix of Condi has a constraint of 3,800 or above. Once the approach is activated, VNAV Vertical Path Guidance will bring us to 3,800 feet at Condi while observing all intermediate altitude constraints. On the map page, you will see the altitude constraints displayed and a BOD indication at the final approach fix. Once inbound to the final approach fix for a ground-based nav approach, you will see flashing indications advising you to select the appropriate approach frequency as active and to select the CDI source to VLOC. From this point, vertical path guidance is replaced with glide slope vertical guidance. During our demonstrations of VNAV functionality, we have been showing the VNAV enunciations that you would expect to see on a Garmin TXI 7-inch portrait display as shown below. Similar indications will be observed on a TXI 10.6-inch display, the G500-600 display, and on the G3X touch display. While these indications vary slightly between devices, in all cases, the indications are very intuitive and easy to interpret. Now that you have seen the GTN's Enhanced Descent VNAV functionality in action, We'll review here the requirements for various levels of this functionality. First, the GTN must have a barrel-corrected altitude source in order to enable VNAV functionality. For a vertical deviation indicator to be displayed, the GTN must be paired with a Garmin PFD. And while any autopilot may be used to manage descents, a Garmin autopilot must be installed to provide for coupling to the vertical path. For those with non-Garmin autopilots installed, we suggest user fields be set to provide vertical path information, such as time to TOD and vertical speed required, and that vertical speed mode be set to vertical speed required when at TOD. Worth repeating here are the four basic pilot actions required to ensure successful employment of VNAV. First, you must have a VNAV altitude entered into the flight plan, whether this is input by the pilot or it is populated automatically as part of a procedure. Second, you must set a selected altitude that is lower than the current altitude. For ATC controlled operations, the altitude selected should be the lowest altitude to which you were cleared to descend. Third, you must ensure that the aircraft is on an active nav leg. And finally, ensure that VNAV is armed on the Garmin Autopilot mode controller. If a pilot action is missed or a limitation exceeded, alternate methods should be used for the descent. This could include vertical speed mode, VNAV Direct 2, or disengaging the autopilot and hand flying. For non-Garmin autopilots, you need to set the vertical speed required at the top of descent. Vertical navigation in the GTN has certain limitations. The system is not able to meet constraints that require the aircraft to climb. It also cannot meet constraints that require a descent in excess of 4,000 feet per minute or a flight path angle in excess of 6 degrees. It also cannot meet a constraint when the top of descent is located behind the aircraft. The leg type must support altitude constraints, and no constraints can be added past the final approach fix. If the system is unable to reach a current vertical waypoint, you will receive a message informing you of this issue. 
Whether using VNAV functionality with an autopilot on a descent via clearance for an arrival procedure or hand flying the airplane to arrive at pattern altitude at a designated point, the VNAV feature is a great resource that reduces pilot workload while providing optimized descent profiles.